you always have to follow through over your left shoulder as a right-hander, always. No exemptions, no nothing. Follow through over your left shoulder. How often have you heard that follow through over your left shoulder? Probably a lot. If you're a regular lesson taker, you're hearing a lot down and back, follow through over your left shoulder. And that is correct, but not always. That is completely cookie cutter. And tennis is a very situational sport. Your finish depends on a few things. Your finish, for instance, and it starts very, very early, depends on your grip. The grip dictates the contact point and the swing path. So that is the number one. I made a video about that already, so link for that is down in the description. But what it also affects, the grip, is your finish. And more importantly, really what you want to do with the ball and or what the incoming ball is. So you have to be ready to finish in multiple ways. Four, for instance. The yes, over the left shoulder, but then there's the finish over the biceps. There's the finish from pocket to pocket over your hip. And then you get the good old Nadal buggy whip. But you see really good players using all of them because they adapt according to what they want to do with the ball and what the incoming ball is doing. So let's get started with when it is still applicable to finish over your left shoulder. So to my mind, you finish over your left shoulder or biceps when it's a regular rally ball. If I'm just rallying, hitting a regular ground stroke, whether I use an open stance, closed stance, or semi-open stance, doesn't matter. I want to get some height on the ball. I'm not trying to really put that ball away. And I'm getting a good amount of topspin on the ball. That is when I can absolutely follow through over your left shoulder. Or, as many more people are now doing it, over your biceps. Now let's look at a Daniel Medvedev, for instance. He's almost stroking himself. But he's also adjusting when, for instance, he's under pressure on defense. Ball comes in very heavy and very high. You see this finish. You see that finish, of course, all the time when a player wants to hit extreme topspin. But even Rafa Nadal finishes over his left biceps. Right biceps, of course, because he's a lefty. So again, he adjusts. So this happens when I want a lot of topspin or when I'm about to almost catch the ball late because I have to come up to the ball that I cannot make contact with any longer out here in a very steep fashion. And when I'm coming very steeply from down here, I'm not all of a sudden gonna do that. I'm just gonna use my buggy whip. You see Ash Barty doing it all the time. You see that when she's falling off the ball here almost a little bit, but then catching her balance and just gets a high, heavy ball off there that gives her time then to come forward. When do you use that little finish from pocket to pocket? Or as I teach it, as the little rainbow. That is what you're using when you want to hit an extreme angle. So let's move into the area of the court where you most likely will actually hit that ball. If I'm being pulled out wide on the deuce court for me as a right-handed player, and I want to hit a little dink angle, what I want to do is I want to come over the ball really quickly, and then I want that ball to dip. So my swing shape looks very much like what I'm trying to produce. So let's see if I can do that here, just tossing the ball here. That works. And the result was actually pretty good. And I can do that, of course, with my open stance. I can do it with a semi-open stance, either way. Another time when I'm doing that is when, again, I need that ball to come up really quickly, but then also come down really quickly. That is when I'm hitting an approach shot. So if I have a shorter ball, of course, I'm further inside the court. That also means that I'm closer to the net and I have to lift the ball really quickly. I have less room to hit into, so it has to come down really quickly. The way that I want to do that is by giving it extreme topspin, brushing over the ball, and then I finish over my left hip. So it looks something like this. And I can do that with my left hop hop, or I can do it with a goofy step. 
what I call it, because it looks a little goofy, but still effective. So a little rule of thumb that I was taught was the way that you want to shape your ball equals the shape of your swing. So if you want to hit a regular rally ball, you have some shape on the ball coming from low to high here, it sends the ball higher, but not necessarily as steeply. And the finishes will be biceps or your left shoulder. If you want a really steep swing and a really steep ball, that is this finish or this finish. And the distinction between those two, to my mind, are where you are in the court and what type of angle you want to choose. So those are the things that you want to think about. And yeah, finish over your left shoulder. Not always. <laughs>